Hey, how you doing there again, folks? You get a course, Brandon Wenzel. Come back at you, another offering off my sampler platter. <sighs> yes, indeed, folks. Sampler Review Series videos I do for the one I go over there, try out food and drink items. I eat stuff, I drink stuff, then, folks, I'm gonna talk about stuff. I'm gonna let you know all that you need to know about hopefully delicious stuff that time I'm doing this, folks, I'm not gonna lie. This one right here makes me want to go snipped. But we'll get we'll get to that. Folks, it's a super simple format. I'm gonna go over there and try out food and or drink items for you. Whilst I'm doing so, I'm yammer on about it for a bit. Whilst I'm doing all that, I am inside my back room today, which means we get Peter Can Thunderbolt poster back there. Yeah. Whilst I'm doing all that, folks, I am doing something else. What is it? Mm, I'm wearing a super cool shirt. Folks, when I wear super cool shirts, I always like to highlight the super cool shirt. What super cool shirt am I wearing for you today, folks? What happens to be my boom? It doesn't have a title, but this is a shirt from a local cop, well, a independent comic book company called Unstoppable Comics, featuring their character, the Interceptor, right there, beating the shit out of this douchebag troll guy. Um, or goblin, I think. What is Unstoppable Comics? Um, I have featured at least a couple of their shirts in the past, but... Yeah, they're an independent comic book company uh, run by basically one guy named J.D. Rosario, who operates out of New York. <coughs> I became aware of their stuff, uh, God, years ago now, probably close to a decade, uh, through Kickstarter and stuff like that. And, you know, I supported some of their projects. I've been fortunate enough to, you know, meet J.D. on one occasion when he, you know, came and visited Chicago for a convention. Extremely good dude. Love his work. And basically, I've just been supporting them ever since. Uh, whenever they have a new project out for Kickstarter or whatever, I always try to go over there and put it out. And that's actually where I got the shirt from. It's one of my Kickstarter rewards. Very cool shirt. If you happen to be interested in Unstoppable Comics at all, let me know. I will be more than happy to kind of point you in the right direction as far as, like, their work and what they do. But anyway, what are we doing here, folks? Why am I wearing a comic book shirt? Snicked a... Well, folks... The time I'm doing this, it's only been maybe a couple weeks since uh, the release of Deadpool and Wolverine. And shameless tie-ins. Sure. So we've got a <laughs> Wolverine and Deadpool flavored DiGiorno. Specifically, this is with the classic crust. This is their spicy wolvie pie, which apparently consists of pepperoni made with pork, chicken, and beef. Chorizo and bacon. So I'm guessing the chorizo aspect is supposed to be the, the spicy bit. But yeah, man, I actually, it's fla also flavor 404. There's even a little thing. I actually haven't seen the movie yet. I'm waiting to get together with some friends, but that yeah, tie-in stuff, right? So let's take a look at the pizza itself. Yeah. It looks like, ooh, looks like that. Eh, not a bad looking pizza. Uh, it is DiGiorno, which is a little bit higher class than a lot of the pizzas that I review on this channel, if I'm being honest with you. But, uh, sure. Let's try to get a thing for the thing, folks. It does take a little bit of doing, but, uh... Like that, and then we'll try to get the thing in there, and it'll be like that. Sure. Ha 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 <laughs> but anyway, it's been a while since I've had DiGiorno. And it was just 425 put it in for 17 minutes. If this sucks, by the way, and cooking has anything to do with it, it can only be DiGiorno's end because there is no, like, room for error there. They're, like, 17. Not, like, 15 to 17, 17 to 20, 17. Honestly, very disappointing. Because, like I said, usually when I'm doing like frozen pizza reviews, which I've done quite a few for the show over the years now, you know, a lot of times I'm doing like cheaper stuff. I'm just kind of toss some stuff out there, you know. Um, like I said, it's been a long time since I've had DiGiorno. I remember really liking it, you know, definitely well above the standard. Um, 
I don't know. This just kind of, it's definitely better than the more, you know, bargain basement ones, your jacks and, you know, your, like, great value and what have you. But honestly, not to the extent that I was hoping. The crust is definitely better. It crisped up nicer than pizzas I usually do. Definitely eats a little bit better. But, I don't know, honestly, kind of mad. The chorizo, for one thing, it ain't spicy. And that might play a role in why it's kind of a little bit of a letdown for me. In fact, it definitely is because when, whenever I make pizzas, you know, just, uh, whenever I make pizzas just for myself, not doing reviews, I always go over there, before I put the pizza in the oven while it's still in its frozen state, I like to go over there and drizzle on a little hot sauce of varying varieties to give it a little extra kick. So I am used to my pizzas being a little bit more kicky, but or snickety in this case. But uh, yeah, I kind of feel like there's not enough chorizo here to really make much of a difference. It's just kind of, and honestly, even the bacon, you know, like, it's definitely like those smaller little bacon kind of bit things. Um, you know, there might be a little tingle on the tongue from the chorizo. There might be a little something from the bacon, but yeah, none of it's really coming through as being anything really to write home about. Which is a shame because I was genuinely kind of hoping, okay, you know, I was looking forward to this one a little bit. Because, again, it's DiGiorno. I'm thinking to myself, all right, cool. You know, I feel a little bit of a treat for myself, you know, compared to, again, a lot of the normal pizzas I make. Um, there was a little chorizo. I mean, it wasn't spicy, but I at least got the chorizo flavor, which was nice. Chorizo was delicious. Yeah. Here's the thing. <laughs> Two questions have to be asked. Would I get it again? Would I recommend it? Um, no and no. No. Because, here's the thing. I like the idea of this pizza. That's like a great combination. There's no reason why that shouldn't work. In fact, the idea of chorizo on pizza is a very appealing one. Because I don't know. I probably had chorizo on a pizza at one point in time or another. But it's definitely not a commonplace ingredient, you know. Um, I like the idea of that. I think that would be a great addition to pizzas, you know, in general. Like a nice meat lovers with some. But even with it being DiGiorno, where, yeah, they are a little bit higher end on the uh, frozen pizza market, I just don't think it translates that well in this format. You know, chorizo and bacon are both a little bit more premium-ish ingredients. And... Unless you want to go over there and start charging, and let's not forget, DiGiorno ain't exactly cheap, you know, it's probably about three times as much as, like, a Jack's pizza. Um, it, you know, it's just, yeah, man, unless they want to start charging more so you can get more on there, or maybe they're willing to take a little bit of a, you know, hit or something, which I, I kind of would have hoped they would have done for the tie-in aspect, you know, because, again, it's, that's the big movie that's out right now, you know, let's do the thing. Um... No, I just think for me personally, it's fine. I don't dislike it, but when, if I'm being entirely honest, it doesn't feel that much better than just a Jack's Pizza that I would have made myself. And again, honestly, mine probably would have been a little bit more to my liking overall because, again, I just would have added a little hot sauce, maybe a little garlic powder or something just to give it a little extra oomph. Um, I mean, it does eat nice. It's definitely a better quality pizza than those lower budget ones, but... I, I don't think that that's enough to save it. It's certainly not enough to make it worth the price for me. Um, yeah, and it's definitely not worth it for the tie-in, you know? I mean, I'm all in for tie-in products. I think they can be a lot of fun. I think this could have been a good idea, but... Mm, yeah, the execution is very underwhelming, in my opinion. Um, and for that same reason, I, I definitely wouldn't recommend it, because for me personally, it just feels... You know... In this instance, I was hoping, again, with DiGiorno, I was hoping this wouldn't be the case. Usually when you're doing a tie-in, you're paying for the tie-in. You know, that's what you're really buying. But with DiGiorno, I was like, no, okay. 
it's fucking DiGiorno. You know, they they can put together some decent stuff. It it definitely feels like you're paying for the tie-in. That's really it. The pizza itself is mid at best. You know, if you want to go in for frozen pizza, there's definitely way better ones out there. Um, you know, and I don't know. Like I said, it's been years since I've had DiGiorno. I don't know if this is just where they're at these days or if this isn't indicative of their overall quality. I, I really don't know because for me personally, you know, if I'm doing a little bit snazzier pizza, man, I'm going to do like Home Run In or one of the Chicago-based ones. You know, those tend to do really well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of a shame, especially with the whole tie-in thing. I was trying to be all comic booky, But anyway. Five things before I get out of here. Have yourself a great rest of your day. Spectacular rest of your week. Monumental rest of your month. Stupendous rest of your year, folks. Go with your themselves. And truly, I'll be honest, I don't really care that much about Wolverine or Deadpool that much anyway. <laughs> Being just 100% out there. Most of my favorite characters definitely aren't those two. I don't dislike them. I just don't care. Final two things. Number one, try to bring some positivity into the world. It's not always possible. It is, however, always appreciated. But... What you do if you can't do it all the time, I know I can't do it all the time. Here's what you're going to do, folks. You're going to try not to be an asshole. Folks, it's not always the easiest thing in the world to not be an asshole. Trust me. I know it. I live it. I'm out there every day with you in it. Life can be stressful and frustrating and just bullshit sometimes, folks. And when we find ourselves in situations where we have to deal with said bullshit, it's important we go over there whenever possible. Take a step back. Try to mitigate the level of assholishness in our lives. Hopefully, do better for ourselves and for those around us. Very final thing, folks, do the thing. Whatever the thing is for you, that's what I want you to go out and do. Folks, who's your favorite comic book character? Do you have one? Do you not? Do you not like comics at all? You know, these days, nerd culture has really become or <laughs> synonymous, uh, synonymous with pop culture. They really have become sort of one and the same. But, of course, there are still people who that's just not their thing. Um, and that's perfectly fine. Like, as long as you're not being a dickbag about it. I actually got into it. This was, like, probably year or two ago now i got into it a little bit with another youtuber because you know he's just like i don't like nerdy stuff Brr. and it's like that's fine but to still have that type of attitude in 2022 or 2023 whatever the fuck it was now it's just so middle school you know i mean it's like i'm not into football and well, i'll have an occasional jab at the chicago bears because i think it's funny that they suck um you know i don't hate on people who enjoy football you know enjoy what you want to enjoy don't be a fucking you know ass clown about it but anyway uh